Indigenous people have been harvesting salt by hand in this part of Mexico for over 2,000 years. But today, half of these salt pools are abandoned. Unlike table salt, this artisanal variety is unrefined and made in small batches. But the work pays little, and many producers can't afford to carry on the tradition. Those who do remain often work alone, in a last effort to save this piece of their heritage. We visited Zapotitlan Salinas to see how one salt producer's business is still standing. Juan Diego Hernández Cortez works on his land seven days a week, all by himself. No es este redituable como tal, o sea, como para contratar a alguien, ¿no? Como para traer a algún ayudante. The mountains here were once under a sea, so they're full of salt deposits. When it rains, water carries that salt down to these natural wells. Then Juan collects it. Cada pozo tiene diferente concentración, no todos tienen la misma salinidad. Juan carries about 40 pounds of salt water over the rocky hills, barefoot for better traction. He fills one of the man-made pools and cleans another to prepare for the filtration process. Then he pushes all the water into the cleaned pool. Una vez que se pasó el agua para acá, aquí se queda un día o dos días y entonces ya el lodo se queda abajo, se sedimenta. Little by little, he transfers the water back into the empty pool through a mesh bag. Y hacemos este filtrado para que la basura que tiene ahí es la que se va a quedar aquí. Entonces ya pasa el agua filtrada a donde ya va a empezar a cristalizar. The liquid sits for at least five days, evaporating under the sun. Empieza a formar capas de sal, un cristalizado que se forma este superficial. Y le echar el agua encima con una jícara del mismo cuadro y acumular capas de sal abajo. A new layer crystallizes each day. Once there are enough, Juan shovels the crystals into a mound. He uses his feet to break down the big pieces, which aren't too sharp when they're wet. Then he piles the salt into a basket, which works like a colander, draining out all the moisture. It stays out in the sun to dry for four or five days. After it's cleaned and packaged, it sells to locals for around 10 pesos a liter, or 50 cents. He sells higher quality salt to restaurants and tourists for 30 pesos a liter, or a little more than a dollar. Artisanal salt like this is sought after for its unique flavor and natural properties. No lleva ningún químico, solamente son minerales que dejó el mar hace millones de años atrapados en la tierra. You can't find that in industrialized salt, which is often mined from underground deposits and processed to remove other minerals and add preservatives. Juan makes salt for cattle to eat too. It's drier and more bitter than human salt. It also requires extra mixing and grinding using a stick made from an agave plant. It can take two months to get the cattle salt to this stage. But for all the salt Juan makes, consistent weather is crucial. That's why he only harvests during the dry season. Si cae la lluvia, y es una lluvia fuerte, esto se echa a perder. Todo lo que está ahí en sal se derrite. Hoy en día este, ha habido muchos cambios de clima. Between cattle salt and human salt, Juan sells about three tons every six weeks, bringing in around 2,500 pesos, or $116 per week. Juan learned the trade from his father, who learned it from his father. He's been spending long days here since he was just about six years old. Incluso en algún momento, como yo era pequeño, yo le decía a mi papá, ya nos vamos. Y mi papá decía, este, no, todavía no, hasta que cante el grillo. Si lo, lo quiero mucho, porque es herencia y porque he estado toda la vida aquí. Entonces, para mí sería todo. ¿no? Zapotitlan is located in Puebla, 
and it was engulfed in a sea 50 million years ago. That sea left behind salt deposits that indigenous people started harvesting at least 2,000 years ago by heating salt water in clay pots. By the 16th century, solar evaporation became the more efficient and widely used approach. Salt production boomed along with Zapotitlan's economy toward the end of the 19th century, when travelers would pass through town along part of the historic trail El Camino Real. But after the Mexican Revolution in the early 1900s, the indigenous people of Zapotitlan lost half of their land. Plus, many young workers who went to fight never returned. Today, around 60 salt producers are left, and at 41 years old, Juan is one of the youngest. He says nowadays, Zapotitlan salt is underappreciated. No la conoce y no lo valora, no lo paga, pues como debería de ser. Y para nosotros como productores, este, no es redituable, ¿no? Many property owners can't afford to maintain the salt pools, and local indigenous laws prevent them from selling to anyone outside the community. So half the land sits unused. Si se dan cuenta, igual mucho de la, del lugar o de lo que es este, cada salina, eh, se ve muchas como ruinas. No alcanza para vivir de esto y menos para reconstruir ¿no? o reparar este, esta estructura, ya que todo es muy caro. Many in the community have left to look for other work. Pues no es tan fácil, ¿no? Trabajar aquí para en algún momento tener familia, pues no vive uno de esto, ¿no? Entonces, si hablamos de la comunidad, eh, es pequeña, más o menos 3,000 habitantes, pero alrededor de 1,000 jóvenes están en el extranjero. But Juan plans to stay and build towards a better future. He's banding together with 25 other producers to form a brand which will help them sell the salt at a higher price. They've also learned how to deliver their products during the pandemic. Juan remains hopeful that the artisanal salt industry in Zapotitlan will be revived. Yo lo veo a futuro y tiende a regresar, ¿no? Que la gente vuelva a voltear a consumir lo natural, ¿no? lo orgánico como eso, ¿no? lo artesanal. Y tengo esa como visión, ¿no? Que a futuro la gente va a comprarlo, va a valorarlo. E incluso también este, muchos este, jóvenes o hasta familias podrían regresar a, al trabajo.